Hey everyone, I'm Nico. Today I'm going to be talking about modern JavaScript, and that really means talking about DSX. Um, so there's basically three different uh, parts of ES6. Uh, the first one is that it makes your code simpler, uh, and that really helps keep it uh, short, right? Then there's the fact that it makes you uh, write more concise code, and that really means that you're able to take away things that you otherwise have to write in ES5 and not have to do it. And the other important part is that it allows you to not focus so much on how you do some things, and uh, instead focus on actually doing things and uh, focusing your code into what you want to do rather than how you do it. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is object literals, literally. So the first feature in object literals, and there's three different improvements here, is uh, property value shorthands. And this really means that you're, if you have a, a property uh, that has the same name as a variable you want to assign to it, you can just get rid of the right-hand side in ESX. The second feature is uh, method definitions, and this really helps you keep your code shorter by not using the function keyword and the column. And it's similar to when you declare getters or setters using the ES5 syntax where you don't have the function keyword either. And then there's the computer property names which allow you to inline dynamic expressions used as property keys so that you don't have to first declare the object literal and then assign to, to that property. You can just do it inline in the object initializer. Then there's arrow functions. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of Silly things like that. Arrow functions are basically the same as regular functions, but they're shorter. This means there's, again, no function keyword, but instead you have to use uh, an arrow. So, hence the name and the silly gif. There's a lot of different ways to write arrow functions. For example, if you have a single parameter, you can drop the parentheses. Or if you just are going to return a, a single expression, you can get rid of the return keyword and the block and just use an expression. And then the return and the block will be implicit. Um, so the value will still be returned by that arrow function. Um, the big difference between regular functions and arrow functions is that um, there's lexical scoping, meaning that this in the arrow function really refers to the outer uh, context. Um, and this is usually what you want with arrow functions because it makes it easier uh, if you are inlining an arrow function in a set timeout, for instance, to reference the function from outside and not the context of that anonymous function. Um, so that's that. And there's also improved the expressiveness. As you can see here, this would take me a lot more code to write and uh, express what I want to do if I'm uh, write ES5 code, whereas here I'm not using the function keyword, I don't have return keywords, I don't have a uh, block uh, for the function either. So can you guess what that returns? Okay, uh, you can't, maybe, but <laughs> it's 24. It's, it's way easier to scan through that code in ES6 rather than in ES5. There's also destructuring. The GIF is more like stretching, but uh, you get the idea. Um, the structuring allows you to simplify variable declarations when you are trying to pull values uh, uh, or properties out of objects. So for instance, if you're trying to pull x and y from a position object, you can just uh, drop the right-hand side uh, repeated uh, property names and just use curly braces around the variable declaration. And this way, it will be implicit that you're referencing a property by the same name. You can also merge these uh, declarations together if you are uh, if you just add a comma in the middle. Um, and there's also aliases. So if you are if you want to declare a variable by a different name than the, the the actual property, you can just use an alias. 
And as we'll see in a little bit, uh, this makes sense in some use cases. There are also default values. Uh, and believe me, the destruction has like a lot of different applications and uh, that's why the syntax is so uh, allowing. Um, so if, if a property is missing in the position object, you can provide a default value for it. And uh, there's also deep destruction, and this really means that you are able to access, like in this case, uh, the property person.p.x and define x and y variables. And here is really where aliases uh, make sense because now you can do like person x and person y, um, giving it a little more context into the variable name. So that really helps you. It's also useful in, uh, in dealing with arrays because you can also destructure arrays. And, and this really shines when you're dealing with, uh, with regular expressions because uh, before your six, you have to reference their different indexes individually, and they m m might not make much sense. But in in ES six, you get rid of all that, and you just say that all is the first one, and then A is the second one, etc. And if you don't really care about all, which normally you you don't use when you are dealing with regular expressions, you can just skip that and. Uh, the, the, uh, the, there won't be a variable allocated for that particular index. Another feature uh, in this structure is that it allows you to swap different values using a single statement. And this makes it much shorter to write than uh, with DS5. <coughs> There's also default values in parameters in a function call and also in, in, a, in arrow functions. So. You, you got your basis covered there as well. And uh, you can use them actually in any place you want in the function, not just the, the last few, as in some languages that provide default values for the last few arguments. You can also destructure a parameter entirely rather than, uh, than just provide a default for it. So this way, if you have like an options parameter, you can provide defaults for each dif individual option in the, uh, in the parameter list itself. The problem with this approach is that if, if the user provides uh, an empty object or an object with just a single option, that's fine because it'll be filled out with the rest of your default values. But if they provide uh, no object at all, um, then your program will probably uh, crash and burn because the, the default values would try to be assigned to something that's not created. So a workaround for that is to provide the default value for the options object itself into an empty object and then have it filled with the options. Then there's rest parameters, which allow you to try, if you're still in the audience, get some rest. Um, so rest parameters are one of those features that simplify your code so that you don't have to worry so much on the how and you worry more on what you actually want to do. Um, in ES5, there's a lot of jumbling around when you have to deal with dynamic arguments. Um, and the rest parameters operator allows you to just do dot, dot, dot uh, list or something um, in the parameter list, so that's more clear as well. And, uh, and then all your arguments will be in that variable. Another problem you usually have when you're dealing with dynamic arguments is that maybe you want the first one or, or the first and the second one, and then the rest of the parameters. Um, this is something that REST parameters also fixes by allowing you to declare a few variables first and then in the last position, um, and only in the last position, you can do uh, the REST parameters with the rest of the arguments. And our big difference between arguments and the REST parameter is that um, the REST parameters is an actual array and you don't have to cast it or anything. Then there's the spread operator, which basically uses toasts and, uh, well, it's not like that, but uh, it's similar to rest um, because you usually have um, breakfast in the morning and you maybe spread something uh, on, on your toasts. But uh, in the case of JavaScript, uh, when you have to concatenate different arrays, you can, uh, you can get very involved in JavaScript very quickly and uh, 
this spread operator allows you to inline those uh, concatenations inside the same array, um, making it much easier to read once you get used to ESX syntax. It also allows you to use dynamic parameters or dynamic arguments for a function uh, without having to use apply. And apply usually spends a lot of your, um, your thought process into, okay, he's doing apply and all, but he doesn't want to provide the context, but he does want to have dynamic arguments. Um, so this kind of simplifies a lot of that and makes it easier. Another similar issue is uh, trying to do new and apply in ES5. It's really complicated. Uh, if you ever have to do it, you'll probably pull out the, uh, the answer from Stack Overflow like I did. So there's that. Um, but in ES6, you can just use new with the uh, spread operator, and that's it. So it's much easier. And it's also able to be combined with uh, destructuring, so that you can destructure arrays doing the first, the second, and the rest of the arguments into another array. So that's, there's that, too. Before ES6, it's really hard to cast array-like uh, array objects into, into true arrays because you have to go through um, language-specific stuff and really know that uh, if you do array uh, slice call, ar array prototype slice call, uh, you're going to be able to, um, to cast it into a true array. But uh, that's going a lot into JavaScript uh, quirks, and instead with the spread, you can just uh, spread the, uh, the different uh, parts of your array like into uh, an array as long as it's uh, an iterable object, which in ES6 uh, you have like arguments, uh, no lists, and, uh, and all that it, it are array-likes, so it's much easier uh, for you to, to cast these things into true arrays. Then there's template literals, which are really an R flavor for strings. Strings have a lot of different issues in ES5, particularly when you're trying to um, to format a string with your own expressions in the middle, it can be kind of hard to read the text because there's like a lot of uh, strings starting and ending, a lot of plus signs. Um, so you usually come up with some way of formatting uh, your strings and then uh, it becomes uh, weird. So in ES6, you have that natively. You can use uh, expression interpolation with arbitrary JavaScript in it. Um, Another problem it solves is that usually in ES5 you use uh, multi-line strings by concatenating arrays or uh, concatenating strings and using escapes or even parsing out functions made out with a comment. Um, so that's confusing. Um, so in ES6 you can just use template literals which uh, have support for multi-line by default. Um, so I'm henceforth declaring uh, that template literals are strictly better than single and double quoted strings, and that's that. Okay, so let variables bloom now. So let is basically a different way of declaring variables. Uh, if you remember, um, the bar declarations in, in JavaScript are basically um, function scoped, and this means that the variable is going to be pulled, uh, uh, hoisted to the top of that function. Um, let is a bit different in that it's block scoped, so it's going to be hoisted to the top of the, the block instead. Um, and this allows you to have variables by the same name in different blocks or in the same function. Um, and you don't have to de declare these variables in the very top of the function for, for you to be able to logically follow what the program will, will actually do. So all of that is really good. Um, one thing about LED is that there's this mystical thing called the TDC or the temporal dead zone. And yeah, that's a very frightening name for something that really means that if you put some code that tries to access a variable before uh, the LED statement that declares it is reached, then your code will throw. So there's that. And that's TDC in one slide. Um, then there's constants, which are kind of frozen like I am, um, I guess. So constants are basically the same as let, except that you must declare them with an initializer so that they always have a value assigned to them. 
Um, these variables are read-only, meaning that you can't assign once, uh, once the variable ha has been declared with its initializer. Um, and they are not immutable. And this really means that if you have an array and you push to it, you are going to have an array with a new item on it. Because the constant is the variable itself that can change its reference, but it's not the, the object that it's stored in the variable that can change. Um, if you have an object, you can even add or delete properties from it. So be aware of that difference when you're dealing with const. <laughs> but there's even more in ES6. Um, and you should really look it up if you're interested, and you should really be, because there's a lot of stuff that you can do with ES6, um, and it's worth looking into. Um, if you are interested in, in reading more about this kind of stuff, you can visit uh, my blog at ponyfield.com. There's an article on ESX that covers uh, everything in like bullet points, and then you, you are able to go to individual articles that cover each feature in depth. So there's that. Um, I'm NSATGB on Twitter. I posted these slides so that you can read them later if you want. Um, thanks. <laughs>